Hey man, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, why is your Subaru overheating? Or what could be causing it to be overheating? I'm no expert, I just know that I bought a Subaru and it started overheating. Uh, the temperature light came on, or the, actually the temperature light didn't come on. So uh, we'll, we'll go through everything that happened to my Subaru and, uh, and what I did about it and then why it's, I think it's happening again. Maybe cut this open and see what's going on inside of there. Welcome to Man Time. Here's the story before we uh, before we jump into this radiator. So I rebuilt my uh, EJ25 in my Subaru Forester, right? Um, when that car went down, um, it was running so poorly, I started looking for another car because it died on me in traffic and then I limped it home and it actually jumped time and I figured I'd ruined a head or, you know, something. So I didn't know that it was going to be a reliable car from then on. I didn't really want to spend the money on a, a car with over 200,000 miles on like a whole new engine because, you know, the, elect the electrical <laughs> and matter of fact, the electrical. Uh, so I rebuilt the engine. I put new pistons, rings, clutch. Um, it was about 1100 bucks worth of parts. Took me a couple weeks here and there waiting on different parts and stuff like that. Well, I finally get it back together, get it running, and uh, I had... Um, God. So it, it was giving me electrical issues, but I had already purchased uh, it's a, this other car anyway, so I was just using it to run around the farm. But there was a two-prong electrical connector, and I think it was a camshaft position sensor, one of the uh, one of the fingers on that sensor got bent over as I was reinstalling the plug, so it was just really weird, giving me problems. Uh, and then I finally figured that out, you know, got it back together, um, got it running again. And then all of a sudden I was getting like misfire cylinder one two three four, you know, and it was intermittent, and uh, and it turned out that was electrical, even though I had a new wiring harness on the car. Um, right there at the main connection uh, where the wire goes back into the car um, the wires in the actual new loom under the hood I was able to uh, get it running without a check engine light and then I was able to wiggle those wires and get like the engine to just you know stumble and start dying but anyways I got a new Subaru uh, uh, 2014 and uh, it was uh, was overheating on me, and it wasn't really clear, you know, that it was overheating because the temperature light wasn't coming on. There's no temperature gauge on the car, um, so it was really difficult to kind of analyze. But, and I didn't really do too much research on it. I was just like, well, and I had oil in the antifreeze, but I figured that was from overheating. Maybe the head gasket, you know, warped a little bit or, or something, um, but it ended up... Uh, it ended up not, uh, well, here, so here's what happened. <laughs> I ended up replacing, um, first the, I got a, uh, thermostat, right? It's going to be like three things. It's going to be the thermostat, the water pump, or the radiator. Um, and in my case, actually, uh, I'm thinking what happened was there was a, uh, oil in the antifreeze and somebody just dumped bars leak, like, as many cans as they could afford into the radiator and it just gummed up the whole system that was my thinking but I replaced the water pump thermostat uh, and uh, and the radiator and now it's the new radiator is clogged up again so I'm gonna look at the old radiator first and then maybe we'll start taking apart the new uh, new car with the new radiator and uh, and see if it isn't clogged up again one thing you can do to check to see if your radiator is clogged up is just break off that uh, lower radiator hose and if water is just trickling out of there you know it's plugged. That's how this one was. So let's cut it open and see what's happening inside. Yeah that turned out to be not a very effective way to figure out if these are clogged. Okay, so there's two, there's kind of like two fins on each one, it looks like. There's kind of a little seam down each one. But they look, 
I mean, they look fairly clear. Huh. Let's, uh, let's cut off the top, maybe, and see if we can see, like, the top of the fins from inside of here. Weird. Huh. Okay, so all of the fins appear to be open. Hmm, huh. interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, I was expecting to see, like, the fins have a very different kind of clogged look to them. Maybe at the bottom? I mean, I got nothing but time here. I guess I'll cut it open, too. Huh. That is really interesting. So these are all open, too. Why was my car overheating? Why is it continuing to overheat? So that proved to be uh, pretty fruitless. Um, but let me tell you what the car is doing, right? So it's overheating. There's no uh, temperature light coming on. Um, but the last time it, uh, it overheated on me, it actually blew the top radiator hose, like blew a hole in it, started spraying on the hood, you know, on the inside. Um, and then the last time it started doing it, after I've already changed the radiator uh, pump um, thermostat, it, uh, the, the telltale sign there is the top radiator hose is like expanded and super hot, and then the lower radiator hose is like cool to the touch. Like, so you know like the fluid isn't getting through the system. And I, I don't know. How is that happening? Let's, uh, let's take a look at the car, start it up. And uh, and take a look in the uh, in the coolant. See if we can see anything. Come up with a plan. All right. So here's the car running. Like I said, new uh, radiator, new upper lower rad hoses. Um, new deal there. That one, the, the old one was actually like damaged where it wouldn't seal. No, well, it's saying camshaft position slow response bank two. Just the one code. Alright, so now we got no more codes. Engine oil fine. Matter of fact I just changed the engine oil. Oh Yeah, see I got oil in the antifreeze. That would tell me that uh, that would tell me that there is a head gasket issue, but it's overheated like beyond overheating. Let's see if we can see the thermostat coming on. I'll get you right over. So that's where we stand with this uh, this little Impreza. A at this point, um, the engine needs to be pulled, right? That's a lot of oil in the antifreeze. Uh, when I first did the cooling system, there wasn't that much oil in it. And uh, so I didn't think it was uh, a head gasket like permanent like that is. But uh, yeah, it's going to have to get pulled now. So where to begin i guess the first thing if you're going to be doing this at your house and like in your front yard but i've got a crane directly above the engine here so i can very easily hook onto it and pull it up out of there um, but i think i want to pull it up on some ramps and uh and maybe get some wood underneath of it there so i can have a little bit of something to work with while i'm taking an engine out of a car again <laughs> another subaru engine out of a car 
And I, I read that there is a, a carbon head gasket that they were using that fails after 100,000 miles. Oddly enough, I got this car with just over 100,000 miles and uh, oil in the antifreeze when I bought it. So might be that, uh, that carbon, might be time to pull the engine. Hopefully there's not head damage with warpage and, and stuff like that. Uh, it's a real shame. You know, I only had this car for about a year now, put, you know, maybe 20,000 miles on it, something like that. I've got a pretty long drive back and forth to work. So, I don't know. I guess that's what you get when you buy a used car, huh? So, stay tuned for future episodes where we're going to be pulling this engine, 2.0. Subaru Boxer engine. Right? Right. Get out there, have you some man time too.